about emerging technology trends and how does that impact you. So if you want to learn about things that are confusing, that don't make sense, then you're at the right place. Today I'm going to talk about a key technology and a couple of key industries where it's creating disruption and changing how things are right now. Just last week I was on a webinar where somebody asked me how does blockchain technology affect the legal industry and really the answer to this is not simple. I can't just tell you all the places where blockchain could replace um, the, the lawyers of today but uh, we'll have to look into different uh, areas of practice for legal firms as an example and to understand how does blockchain affect that specific area where law firms practice. So for today's uh, episode, we're going to talk about the real estate industry. Let's talk about real estate transactions, what happens when you buy a property or list a property, and what transactions take place today in time that blockchain could perhaps replace tomorrow and, and really disrupt the way um, uh, real estate is bought and sold in the market. I've got a blackboard a whiteboard in fact uh, right here and uh, I've got my mighty marker so if you are ready for the next few minutes to learn about something complex but in a simple way here we are so I'm going to be doing a little bit of drawing stay with me grab a coffee pause this video grab some water come back and let's look at exactly what is happening so we'll start with uh, a pure um, uh, use case building we'll, we'll look at who the different parties are involved in this real estate transaction some of the things I'll talk about may be very basic for you or they may be advanced but if you look at this entire episode it will make sense in understanding how uh, the whole industry is being disrupted. So, you decide that you are going to sell your home. You know, you're going to move. Uh, and so, the first thing that we need to identify is all the parties involved in this transaction. So, today, if you want to sell a home, uh, typically in uh, any country or uh, in the modern world, you would typically utilize the services of a real estate company, a real estate agent, a salesperson, or a realtor in simple terms. So, let's do this. First of all, we talk about you, you are the seller and you want to sell your property. We, you, what you end up doing is you end up contacting a realtor who creates a listing agreement. This is what happens. As a seller, the first thing that you need to do is meet up with your realtor and you, what you create today is a document, a paper document, you, or you fill it up on the computer, you print it out, you sign it, and that really is the listing agreement where you agree on what price will this property be sold, what uh, commission uh, will this brokerage or this real estate agent get, let's say it's 2.5%. And all the terms and conditions relating to that agreement are captured in this listing agreement. Now, in order to understand how blockchain as a, as a technology could replace some of the things, I'm going to start adding some elements of thought right here. So first of all, this is a manual process. Even though you could be filling up this paperwork on a computer or you're doing it manually, but you're printing it, it's not stored electronically in 99% of the cases. This is a document that's traditionally printed, stored, faxed, uh, exchanged between different parties, and this is the start of disruption. So the first thing that blockchain is going to be able to do is replace this document with something that uh, could, could be termed as, uh, as, as a smart contract. And so, We're going to talk about the smart contract. What a smart contract is, is a condition-based electronic decision-making tool. With a smart contract, you could have uh, a series of steps that take place after certain conditions have fulfilled. So for example, uh, you, could, um, uh, you could authorize certain automatic payments to different parties based on certain conditions that get fulfilled. So, at this stage, when you create this contract and you replace this initial listing agreement with a smart contract that's built on blockchain technology, 
You're essentially saying that when my property is sold, one of the things that will happen is my agent will get paid their commission automatically. There's no bank checks required, there's no electronic funds transfer required, but my agent will automatically be paid the 2.5% commission that they are owed once my house is sold. Now there's a few different complications behind the scenes that I will explain exactly how they would work. In order for the entire transaction that we will uh, map out here, we will need certain assumptions. And these assumptions are that first of all, uh, something called a land registry, is based on blockchain technology. The banking system is connected with the uh, blockchain technology. Our personal information is captured on blockchain technology. It's, it's some kind of a, of a blockchain where all our personal information, our financial status, our uh, credit worthiness, uh, debts, credits are all captured on, on some kind of a blockchain. And uh, then we also have, uh, yep, yeah, so for now, these three. Now, as, let's go back to our process here. So as soon as you create this smart contract in the future, when everything is blockchain enabled, and it's important for things to be blockchain enabled in order for this to work. This can't just work on its own. The second step is that you find a buyer who says, hey, I love this property and I'm going to buy it and they offer you a price. Let's say uh, for $1 million, you sell your property to the, to, the, to the buyer. Now the buyer has their own real estate agent who, who might be charging, let's say, 2.5% on the transaction. And once the property is sold, this process goes through an offer. The buyer places an offer through their agent. Your agent receives it, gives it to you. You accept it or reject it or you guys go back and forth. But finally, let's say you agree on a price of $1 million. Now, as of today, this document is a paper document. This document is, uh, again, similar to the listing agreement. It's something that's typed on a computer, filled up by your hand, and it's a, it's, a, it's a manual document. Can you believe it? I mean, we're in 2019. We're still printing documents. We're still filling them up with our hand. Now, a big challenge exists that even though these documents could be in PDF format, it doesn't mean they are electronic. It doesn't mean that the information that is filled up in all the different parts of that document is electronically captured, just like we do in a CRM system. It doesn't mean uh, that at all. It just means they are in a digital format, but not in a format where this information can be exchanged. Okay, so that's a big challenge that exists right now that potentially blockchain technology will save. Uh, now, once you have an offer, it will be in the future very easy to add that information and to have, a, to have a smart contract built on blockchain where you can consistently add more things and change more things and, and make that incremental addition based on what happens next. Now you can totally add the condition that when this house gets sold, you also have to pay a 2.5% commission to the buyer's agent or they get the commission. So you've got two things captured into this smart contract. This is just one smart contract that will have these conditions when this property transaction takes place. Now, the third step or the third thing that happens immediately after this or concurrently is that your buyer here uh, needs to approach a bank either to get a, a pre-mortgage approval, uh, a pre-approval on their mortgage, uh, which means before even putting an offer on a property, you as a seller might want to see that can they really afford this? Has the bank given them the credit worthiness? Do they have the money to afford my property? Or is this just a waste of time? Now, very interesting things are going to happen now. 
So you, the bank, our bank of the future, well, our bank of the present right now, is again a silo in its own. They have their own software, they have their own banking system, every bank is different. There's no shared repository of information. For example, when your buyer wants to get an authorization on the mortgage, they have to fill paperwork manually that they need to fill in. They need to type all that things, all those things in and submit that documentation to the bank. The bank takes all that information they type it all into their technology, into their system, into their CRM, into their banking software, and they then respond back with a yay or a nay. They will print the approval uh, and they will get you to sign a few documents, which means your uh, credit has finally been approved. Now, if you're not doing a mortgage pre-approval, let's say at this stage, you placed an offer for a million dollars as a seller that got accepted. Now, you typically will have uh, one or two days where you go to the bank and your seller gives you that time to go to the bank and finalize the fact that you actually have a mortgage uh, and approval that you can pay with. And so at that stage you would approach the bank in today's date and time and get that manual, uh, manual document mortgage approval. So we have another document set. Mortgage approval. So right now we're dealing with a lot of manual filling up of documents. This is all manual work. So let's say the bank says, hey, you get the approval. You're awesome. You're great. That paper trail is collected. So the real estate team here, these two guys who are working hard on your behalf are going to collect all the documentation, the listing agreement, the sales offer, the mortgage document, all of these things are collected and they are given to your lawyer. I'm trying to do this as the best I can. Lawyer, okay. And what the lawyer does is take all of these documents put it in their software, put it in their technology, and either type out uh, the contracts and agreements within uh, Microsoft Word and print all of that out, um, or they have their own proprietary legal software that uh, prints out all these approvals, documentation, and so on. But before the lawyer processes all that information, they have to do a few different things uh, to ensure that this transaction is legitimate, it's uh, accurate, it's a real. Uh, and here are some of the things that they need to do. First of all, they need to go to something called uh, a, land, a land registry. In today's date and time, this land registry is uh, owned by the government. This is um, a database where the record of every property registered in the state, the country, the, the city exists. And really the lawyer has to do what is called um, uh, you know, a, a, a title search. To find out if this property is really owned by this seller here. Okay, so the lawyer needs to do a title search on the land registry records in order to verify if this seller here actually is the legitimate owner of this property. They also end up finding out how much, uh, uh, how much money do they own on this, uh, is a mortgage uh, on this, you know, there's one or two mortgages on this, who are the lenders and so on and so forth. So essentially all the information that they need in order to transfer that, that record on to this buyer once that transaction completes. And this is a very key step. Now, this whole process is manual. Remember we talked about the land registry being on blockchain technology, the banking system being on blockchain technology, uh, your personal information being on blockchain technology. Now here, uh, within these processes with the bank, there's a lot of credit checks that happen. So the bank is going to ask you for your uh, 
for your personal documents, for your educational records, for your job letter, for your uh, salary slip, uh, just to make sure that all of these things add together and verify that you as a buyer have the ability to pay for this mortgage. That's what the bank does. And so that, that record of personal information is scattered all over. So to, in today's date and time, it is, uh, let's say, the, the, the universities and your employer that gives you all those documents as a personal, personal record today. So you collect all those documents and you give it to the bank when you're going to be approved. And so that's another big chunk of manual paperwork that's being exchanged, which goes to the bank here. And the bank processes it. So lawyer does the title search, uh, and you've, you've started this process here. Remember this guy, the smart contract? We're, we've still kept this at pause, and I'm going to activate this in one second when we talk about what blockchain could do as a technology to change this entire transaction. Now, after the lawyer does the title search, everything comes out clear, uh, the, the documentation checks out, the bank approves the mortgage, the lawyer then does the paperwork around transferring that uh, title or transferring that property to your name, to, to the buyer's name. The lawyer also acts as an intermediary to hold the funds. in a trust account. So this whole transaction, when the bank gives the money to the buyer, which essentially should go to the seller, it funnels to the bank account of the lawyer in a trust fund, and the lawyer acts as a trustee for those funds on behalf of the bank, okay? And when everything clears, the bank, is able to give that money to the seller. Now, this is the big picture of a typical real estate transaction where you have a bank with their manual processes, with their approvals. You have the buyer, the seller. You have the lawyer who's doing a lot of paperwork for you, becoming a trustee. You have the, the career resources, the education institutions, your, your, your workplace that's giving you all these degrees and credentials. And as you can see, everything is so isolated from one another. Everything is in its own silo. Everything is a separate document. And there's a lot of paper that's being exchanged. There's different systems of record where this information exists. Now, this entire process in a very efficient world, could probably take anything between, uh, and I'm trying to think real hard, what's the best estimate we can come up with, between the mortgage approvals, between, it could be anything between two, two, two to ten days for this transaction to happen in, in, a, in a really efficient way from the time when an offer is placed to getting a mortgage approval to getting a trust account like this is pushing the limits two to ten days could be very very aggressive okay if everything lines up if everything lines up two to ten days is you're looking at that time frame more towards the ten days uh, not not the two now imagine a system where Information did not exist in these silos. Information did not exist in so many different buckets, but there were central uh, points or databases where all this information existed. Now, I spoke about the idea of the land registry blockchain, the banking blockchain, the financial blockchain, uh, personal information blockchain. Here's what these would do. 
So blockchain as a storage technology, as a uh, information database, as a database that uh, anybody can tap into based on certain permissions that they are given, uh, you could have information available in real time. For example, the education blockchain or your personal information blockchain that would that would actually retain information about your educational records right from the time your university started right from your high school until the current day so education institutions would have to utilize some kind of a blockchain solution where your information is consistently going okay and i said like i said before we need an entire world to change and a lot of different parties to adopt blockchain in order for everything to work properly. So this educational blockchain or the private information blockchain uh, would have your educational records. It would have information, say, from your, uh, from your employers, from your workplaces about how much uh, money you earn per year, how much uh, uh, you know, funding you have available. It could have all of that information in a format where you as the owner of that information could give permission to other parties at will to access that information. So in this case, you would give permission to the bank to access this information when they are accessing your records. Now, going back to our friend, the smart contract that was created in the beginning. This is going to be a, a document or a contract that constantly evolves. This could be a condition created in the smart contract when it's created. That when the buyer approaches the bank for a mortgage approval on this property for this deal, for this unique transaction, then please give the bank access to that information and that's what we're talking about as a smart contract you can signify and stipulate and and talk about the conditions that would apply to that smart contract so as an end user as the owner of that information you would have rights to say yes give access to somebody or no do not give access to anybody now you might say i don't want my realtor to have that information or i don't want the university to know what is in my application you could potentially be blocking all of those and saying no to those all of those things and that's how information governance will be created and uh, privacy rules will be enforced so that would be a condition when the lawyer is doing a title search that information, the records of information about every property or, or the land records would ideally have to exist on the land registry blockchain. And so the land registry blockchain would have this feature that anybody who's authorized to have access to that information could get the access to that information if they had the right credentials. So in this example, lawyers could serve as uh, intermediaries or uh, experts who would by default have access to the land registry blockchain. They would have perpetual access or uh, forever access to the land registry blockchain and this would be, have to be done at a government level, at a, uh, at a regulations level. And so your lawyer does not do, need to do any any manual work in, 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 in searching for these properties but they would automatically have access to those records without the need of doing a title search. So you could also set a condition in, uh, in the smart contract here that when that the lawyer assigned to this case should automatically get access to the land registry records. This could be a condition that's created in the beginning of uh, when this smart contract is created. And I'll talk about the role of lawyers and how it will really dramatically change uh, in the next few years when all these building blocks come together. So we've talked about the universities being and your educational credentials and job information being on a blockchain that's being accessed by, say, the bank. You have the land registry records. 
uh, that will be uh, that will be accessible by the lawyer uh, and things such as the bank having uh, information about mortgage approvals, financial creditworthiness can also be on blockchain that potentially is accessible by the lawyer. So the lawyer does not have to wait for physical documents to come to them because they want to know did the bank approve the mortgage or not. And that's what's happening right now. Banks typically will give you a set of documents that will have the term written for the mortgage, the percentage, uh, and all of those things will be written down on a piece of paper that you have to sign and say, okay, I accept this mortgage condition. And so all of that can be on a, on a, on a type of a blockchain that is accessible by the lawyer. So there's no need to exchange that manual documentation. Uh, right now, it probably takes uh, two or three days for that to happen at best, but it could be instant. It could be in real time that you get access to that banking blockchain. And now we're talking about also many different conditions within, within this smart contract that was created in the beginning. And now the question is, with all the different things that are happening here, the two to 10 days time that it takes right now, could, if we have all of the things on blockchain, this could literally be one hour or this could turn into 10 minutes as a, as a process flow and as a flow of information because all this information is available real time on blockchain or will be or should be. And all of these transactions together would just take say 10 minutes depending on the speed of how fast that specific uh, technology of blockchains come, coming together, serving the real estate industry, how fast does it process transactions? This could turn into 10 minutes. Do you realize the time savings between 10 days and 10 minutes? It's a huge, huge, huge time factor that where uh, millions of dollars, this could be a huge property, this could be tens of different properties, but when you multiply and look at the scale of how the industry could transform because of this. It's, it's ginormous, it's huge. In terms of the different roles that people will play or experts will play, the role of the lawyer is completely going to change because they're not doing any more title searches, they're not typing in manual documentation, they're not creating this new uh, uh, agreement or title record because everything is available to them in real time through different blockchains, uh, perhaps becoming the guardians of information and being the doorkeeper and a trusted advocate that everybody can trust. I think lawyers have a, have a new and emerging area of, um, of expertise is being the guardians of information, the guardians of data. Lawyers can potentially be involved at this stage right here when the first smart contract is created. So the responsibility of uh, lawyers could be designing these smart contracts, uh, facilitating the process in which different banks and different bodies get involved. And so uh, if you think about it, Today's lawyers who uh, are flooded with uh, so much manual work could become the guardians of this, uh, you know, digitally run and blockchain run system. And uh, that completely changes uh, what they do today. Uh, it's not uh, only about, you know, going to court and standing in front of an audience and standing in front of the judge and proving a point, but as a trusted advocate, and I think Lawyers and law firms do that to a huge extent. They are people who, who we trust and who advocate on behalf of us. I believe they could have a huge role here in designing smart contracts, in facilitating this entire process, and in bringing different bodies together. Now, because in typical transactions, uh, lawyers would have access to all of the different blockchains or they would have authorization to different blockchains. They're also holding uh, you know, your funds in, in trust. I think they would be empowered to, uh, to play a vital part in making this entire system uh, change. For real estate agents, uh, real estate uh, brokerages, I think the savings in time and efficiency could be huge because now real estate agents are no longer filling in paperwork, typing in documents, uh, 
endlessly, but they're more focused on actually being out in the field, helping uh, their customers see better properties, get better deals, get more uh, higher uh, value for their listed properties. And that's how, by eliminating all this all this paper, this manual work, it's not just paper, but this manual work that you're recouping time and efficiency in multiple different ways. For, for banks, the process of each trend of approving a transaction. Now, banks make money by lending money. I mean, come on, we, we know that, right? So banks make money every time they give a mortgage out, they are lending people money, so they want to be in the business of approving mortgages. Banks don't not want to approve mortgages, they do want to do that. But for them, it's the time, efficiency, and um, uh, the, essentially the time, again, the, the two to 10 days time of processing they could save, they probably would need five minutes uh, of approval time or say 10 minutes or one hour of approval time to look at all these different things uh, in this transaction and saying, hey, this transaction is good, we love what's happening, we have all the information that has come in from all these different blockchains and we know that these blockchains represent accurate information because that's the nature of blockchain is information is real time, information is accurate because it cannot be tampered with and uh, you cannot change information, it's there forever. You cannot delete it, you cannot modify it, so it's a permanent record that is accurate and that's the biggest advantage that banks will have. They no longer will have to verify documents manually or call, or call your employer and say, hey, does this person really work there and is this the letter that you guys issued that said uh, this person makes this amount of, uh, much amount of money and is that real? All that eliminates, all that is gone. So things that we do for work which we think are highly productive but they are actually a waste of time because that's the nature of the world. We live in a very manual world where we feel uh, many times that the things we do uh, empower us but honestly in my perspective we waste a lot of time with processes that can be automated that technology can take over and, and just automate the hell out of those things uh, giving us time to do other things that are full of purpose that help us be better people and be um, uh, better at our jobs and our professions. So when you look at the overall real estate industry, a real estate transaction, the role of lawyers, banks, education institutions, um, land registry records, personal information records, uh, and a huge portion of uh, what real estate offices do, smart contracts are going to be pivotal in creating and facilitating all of this. Smart contracts are going to create efficiency to a thousand percent in in terms of being able to um, to do faster transactions and in that process it will change a lot of job descriptions it will change what people do for work and how uh, they say that hey I'm a lawyer and this is what I do or I'm a real estate agent and this is what I do so the definition of work is not only just changing for the corporate worker it's also changing for professionals so if you're an accountant you're um, you're a lawyer you're a service provider of any kind there is going to be a huge transformation when it comes to blockchain technology the automation it brings the the trust factor it brings uh, it's all going to dramatically change the way we do things now now, I really want to uh, create a conclusion to this video that today a lot of different uh, projects are taking place on blockchain. Governments are investing millions of dollars on blockchain technology uh, because there is value in it. Uh, check out my upcoming documentary called Blockchain City that's about the story of a few governments across the world uh, where I interviewed some really amazing experts and asked them what exactly was blockchain going to do and how is it going to change industry and transform everything that we do. This is one example. If you want to see more examples of blockchain in a specific industry, tell me what industry that is in comments below and tell me what would you like to see, whether it's transportation, healthcare, education. I will do the same process for use cases in every industry as we go through these episodes of uh, this show. Thank you so much. I hope this has been helpful to some extent. More than anything else, let's engage in discussing the possibilities uh, because of emerging technology.
technologies. Let's talk about the potential in saving our time, creating automation so that we can do more purposeful things and be happier in our lives, in our, in our personal lives, in our work lives. My name again is Ian Khan and I'm here to serve you with knowledge that I have gained by meeting thousands of people uh, and delivering hundreds of keynotes across the world. Subscribe to this uh, video series and subscribe to my channel and follow me on uh, Facebook, Instagram, um, LinkedIn and Twitter at Ian Khan Futurist. I love you guys and until next time, take care. Hi, I am Ian Khan. We live in a fast changing world. Today technology is disrupting everything. But more than that, it is our mindset to not adopt to a fast changing world. It's our inability to recognize our potential to adapt to change and succeed. I am on a mission to unlock human potential and to help you realize the tremendous possibilities that lie in the future. Because technology is such a big part of our lives and the future, I massively simplify complex ideas to help shape the next big thing. You must have probably seen my talks on TEDx or read one of my books. As a futurist and motivational speaker, the purpose of my life is to help you unlock what lies within and for all of us to utilize the tools we have available to be massively successful, to change our lives and to become great. We don't need anything except to realize our greatness and to decide what we want to become. Join me in my quest and together let's create a better tomorrow.